Hi, and welcome back to my series where we're building out a brewery website. If you missed the previous videos in this series, I strongly recommend you go check them out so you know how we got to this point in setting everything up. Since my plan to get all of this done in one video and out the window, I'm breaking this down into a lot more videos. So in this one, we're just focusing on setting up the abstracts and the typography, which sets us up nicely to bang out the rest of the site afterwards. A quick note before we jump in though, my screen recording software got a little glitchy for some reason, so while the audio keeps going, there are two or three spots during the video where the video pauses for a second or two even though the audio is still going. It's not YouTube, it's the recording, so I'm really sorry about that. And with that out of the way, let's jump into it. And now we can start uh, styling this up. So the first thing I'm going to do is, let's go back to my file organization here a little bit, and in my abstracts folder, I'm going to make a few different files here. I'm going to make a new one, and it's going to be called underscore colors.scss, and the underscore here is really important if you've never used SAS. This makes it a partial. This will not turn into a CSS file. Um, we all want everything to be a partial except for my main, and this one will be the one that compiles into actual CSS. So it's going to be underscore colors. I'm going to do an underscore functions.scss. I don't know if I need any functions. We'll add that if we ever need one. Uh, mixins.scss. And we'll add another one, underscore typography.scss. Um, in here, you might also find things like functions and some other stuff. Um, for now, I think for this project, this is all we're going to need in here. So um, th the way I like doing it is I'm going to take this uh, my colors one here. And I'm just going to set up all my colors. And I could do a map, but um, I want to keep this really, really simple. I don't want to get... Um, too complicated. So if we open X XD here and I go to my assets, I've saved, I think, all the colors that I'm using. Um, so these are my brown ones. This is actually uh, a dark blue. So I just have to be careful. But I'm just going to do, and you can definitely set these up as CSS uh, custom properties if you're following along but not using SAS. But I'm going to do these as variables in SAS. Um, so I'm going to do my Let's just go and sort of run through it. So I have a um, dark, usually I, I always do like color. I have my color blue and we'll do dark. Um, and the easiest thing to do is just to copy from here. All right, so there's all my colors. Um, I just brought in the six colors. I think those are the only ones I actually used in the design from the ones that I'd originally had. Um, so I've just done, I always start my variables or whatever it is a lot of the time with like CLR for color because I'm maybe it's, it's easier than writing color and I, I tend to do prefixes like this. It's just the way I work. You definitely don't have to do it like this. Um, so I have my dark blue, my blue base, and my blue light. Um, as I said, I usually use maps for things like this, but in this case, just uh, maps would sort of raise the complexity on it, and I want to make sure people can follow along, even if they're not, uh, if they're relatively new to SAS, and just easy variables like this could definitely um, do it. Good. Um, I don't have any mixins that I'm going to create yet. Those are sort of going to come as we go, but here under typography, and I think, I don't know how many mixins we're going to do. We'll probably come up with one um, interesting one but I'm not sure yet. So for my typography, I only have two font families. So uh, I'm going to do font family. So FF for font family. Um, so it's going to be my title case, I guess one to uh, FF title and my font family body. Um, just looking really, and we have our font weights. So font weight, I think I'm only going to have a normal font weight bold. I know I have a font style italic. I think that's everything I need. Now to actually fill this out, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to head on over to Typekit, which I have right here. And I've already made a kit. So if you've never used Typekit, this isn't a thing, but you can pretty much come down. Uh, you can make a free one. Um, the fonts are a bit limited on a free account, but you can definitely do it. Um, you find the font, um, you just do add to kit and you can create a kit. And once your kit exists, 
um, you get this little pop-up window that will have all the fonts that you're using in your kit and you can do with them l l as you want pretty much. Um, so here once your um, type kit thing loads in you'll get a little window like this and basically you can come on this. So for editor, I think I only need the regular. I think. So you want to turn off the ones you don't want a little bit like Google Fonts. For program, I think the only things I need are my black and my black italic. I don't remember if I use black or bold. Let's go look. It looks pretty thick though. That says bold, but... Hmm. Okay, we'll go with bold and bold italic, and if we have to, we can always switch that out um, later on. So you pretty much choose the ones you want. Make sure you hit publish or it's not going to work. And the one thing that's really, really different with Typekit um, is in your kit settings, you have to tell it the domain that it's going to be using, and that includes uh, like local.dev if you've set up something like that, um, any local environment or your other ones. If you haven't done this, it's not going to work. The other thing you can do is you can optimize performance, but only do this once you've stopped making changes. If you're making constant changes to it, I wouldn't suggest this. I think I might be coming in here to change some weights and stuff, so I'm not going to do it. It just deals with how long things are in your cache, is, I think. Um, I don't remember exactly, but I think that's what it is. So you just do this, you can comma separate it, and then I can do like my site, and it would load on both of them if you're doing local development and uh, what have you. Um, so that should be working. So I'm just going to publish again just to make sure. Um, and while we're here, now while we're here, what we can do um, is. Uh, I'm going to click on this one just for now, and it's using the font in the CSS. It gives you the whole thing you want, so I'm just going to choose this font stack, which isn't much of a font stack. That's my body one. Um, the thing that's a little bit annoying with Typekit is it doesn't give you both, so then you have to click on the other one, and then, whoops, wrong thing, this one here, nope, wrong thing. Grab uh, that right uh, there. Um, for the font weights, I just want to double check. So here, edit, I'm just doing the regular, so I know that's the 400 for this. I don't remember. So this is, it's a 700, and, well, they're both 700, and my style is obviously italic. So normal will be 400, bold will be 700, and italic. I don't know if I really need my font style as a variable, because, yeah, we're going to take that off. That's kind of redundant. Cool. And I'm going to hit publish again. I don't know why. I just tend to hit that every time. And I think we're good to go with that. Why am I getting errors? Whoops. I don't want this whole font family thing here. Uh, so I'm just going to delete that and that. I just want this part of it. There we go. So that is nice and good now. I can hit save on there. Now, one thing that's important with this is I've set up my colors. I've set up my typography. I have to come to my main and I have to import these. So I'm going to do at import. And then I'm going to say colors, uh, not colors, I'm going to say abstracts slash colors. Ooh. And I'm going to paste this and do typography. Now you'll notice that I'm not doing uh, underscore, I'm not doing dot CSS or dot SAS or anything like that. You don't have to. Um, it is smart enough to figure that part out of it so you can keep it nice and simple like this. So that is always nice and handy. Um, I'm going to come into my base one here and I'm going to make a new file called underscore type typography.scss um, and now I'm actually going to start doing some SAS. I tend to do typography before I do any of my other styles. The type is sort of what controls the rest of my look so I'm coming into my typography first to do just that. Now before um, I can actually use any of my type, oh, we're going to go back to Typekit for one more second here. Um, just because one thing I did not do is um, I want to come up to here to my embed code and the default is um, this here where it's going to link to a CSS one. The old one used to always be with JavaScript and they've um, got rid of it. Um, so it says here the default embed code is the simplest way for most websites but you may get your fout. Um, so this is just kind of annoying because then you might have to have two. I can just go in my import here as it says, it's good for code pen, HTML emails, and of course within your own CSS files, which makes just a whole bunch of sense. Um, if you go to the advanced, then you'll get into the, the JavaScript stuff, but we're not going to worry about that for now. 
Um, so I'm gonna paste this right in there and we can keep going. So I have my import from my type kit, so that's gonna bring in my fonts. And now I'm just gonna start doing typography and all my type stuff. So um, if I come and let's just split this to the side for a second. And just to show you why I have two typography files, which confuses everybody. Um, this one, this doesn't give me any CSS. This is doing, it's just making these things available, but I'm not using them anywhere. That's why it's in my abstracts folder. Whereas this stuff over here will actually get compiled. So my font family on my body will be my FF body. So I don't actually have to think about it. I don't have to remember. I don't have to copy and paste. I just have to reference FF body, which is nice. My font size is really big. And I think, what did I do? I did use 21. That's 1.3125 rem. And I'm just going to do that instead of doing some like 100 and whatever percentage on the HTML, which you can do as well. Um, if you don't like rems and you want to stick with pixels, go for it. Um, my line height, I usually start with like 1.6 and then play with it from there. I know I could go and check what I have here, but I'm going to sort of eyeball it as I'm working. My color will be pretty sure the color is color brown dark. Um, I'm going to close this too because I don't really need it. No oh, font weight. Uh, I guess I should put it in here. Font weight of font weight normal. Um, let's just hit a save on that and actually go and see how that's all looking. Oh, uh, <laughs> I said we're going to see how that's all looking. And one thing you'll notice is it hasn't updated. And that's because I'm being really silly. Um, I'm not importing this anywhere. So I have to come into here and import. Um, just to show you, actually, if you're not used to SAS, uh, if we come here and look at my SCS or my SAS, I have my CSS file. There's nothing coming in here because the only files that it's looking at right now are my abstracts. So it's bringing in my abstract things which don't make any CSS. Now I'm going to do base slash typography. Hit save on that. Whoops, I don't want it now. And now if I come up and click here and I look, look at that in here, we can see that it's all my stuff that I wrote in my uh, typography here is coming in and uh, is regular CSS over here now. So I know it's working. Um, it also means here, like uh, whenever I save, like I hit save, you'll notice it says success here. If I delete this K from here, I use a, a variable name that doesn't, you see I get an error and this thing even like pops up and it tells me, oh, there's a mistake here. This doesn't exist. Um, so you get errors and stuff if ever you make a mistake with your SAS, which is kind of handy. Um, I think I want my section title and my section subtitle to both be font family FF title. So you can see why I do the FF. I, I don't know. For me, I find that's the easiest way to do it. Um, I don't know if my text is working. I just ran into a bit of an issue and I couldn't figure out why anything was working. And uh, guys, I'm not smart. I forgot to link to my CSS file. Uh, link uh, href is css slash main dot uh, css. Save. There we go. Now it makes sense. I'm glad. Okay, that was weird. It's when I change this to the this one. I'm like, wait, that didn't change. Wait, nothing has been changing this whole time. Uh, then I realized I was making a bit of a mistake along the way there. That was not smart, but I figured it out <laughs> eventually. All right, so uh, 1.6 is too big here. I'm gonna make that like 1.5. Looks a little better. So that looks good for my, uh, at least this is working. So then my section title font size is going to be a lot bigger. And do I change the size of those? Uh, the color, I mean, I will be changing the color. So that comes out to 4.75 rem. I'm just seeing 76 divided by 16, and I am using a calculator. I'm just editing that part out. Uh, so font size and my color is color, whoops, color blue dark. Sweet. And my section subtitle is going to be font size of a lot smaller. One point. 
we'll just go with 69 RAM because it was I'm rounding up a little bit. And the color on this color is my color blue light. Uh, font style italic text transform uppercase letter spacing three pixels maybe two pixels maybe yeah that looks better good uh, one problem with everything in general here uh, that drives me nuts so I'm just gonna come here and just do h1 h2 h3 I only have that so I'm gonna do that uh, I can put my figure on here too figure I know it's not typography but it saves a bit of space um, margin top of zero I'm just gonna do margin zero and then I can sort of reset things as I'm going I find it makes it a little bit easier so the title will have a margin top actually I think that can stay the same uh, they're also going to get a line height, line height of one. They have margin of zero on them, but see how there's a big space. I'm going to do line height of one and hit save, and that's going to help reduce that space there. That section subtitle will need a margin bottom. I'm thinking one M ish, maybe smaller 0 0.5. I'm not giving this one a top one. We're going to see, I might have to change that, but I think for now it's going to work and look pretty good that I'm happy with. Um, I mean, navigation will just style all that when we get there. Good, I think we're done with my typography. I'm probably gonna be jumping back in here, but I think that is that pretty much wrapped up. And that's that. I hope you like this video and what I'm doing with the series. If you have any comments or questions, please leave one down in the comments below. If you're new to this whole SaaS thing and it's piqued your interest a little bit, I'm working on a SaaS course. It's not out yet, but you can follow a link down in the description below and sign up to find out when the course launches. And that's that. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next part. Until then though, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.